So it appears Gavin McGuinness has seen and subsequently commented on his documentary Uhuru. A recent episode of his flagship show Get Off My Lawn had the anal fetishist responding to me personally in a less than cordial manner. Between breaks of forced chuckles, hopeful of convincing just about anybody that hoes not mad, he would spend over two minutes proving the exact opposite. And also this weekend, yep, uh, this documentary about me called Uhuru came out that is an hour and a half of meticulously exploring my life. Gavin's sniggering tirade begins with what appears to be an embarrassing attempt at some sort of alpha chat big dogging. Despite having no doubt watched all of what he called an hour and a half of meticulously exploring my life, he seemed to conveniently struggle recalling the name Porcelain. A strange move, considering he clearly put frenetic efforts into finding out my real name. It's weird too, because it's like some guy named Polaris or something in Porcelain, I forget his name. Or I think he's a British kid named Adam. He then claimed I simply took the Death of Call audiobook and added a bunch of insults. Again, strange given there is maybe less than two minutes of total audio from the Death of Call used in the entire documentary. These included an hour long Get Off My Lawn episode solely dedicated to discussing Vice, a 55 minute interview with Shane and Sarouche, a 23 minute documentary created by Vice in 1999, a 10 minute CBS interview with Sarouche, countless compound media episodes where Gavin discusses Vice in detail, and numerous articles written about the trio since Vice's inception. He just sort of made the death, took the death of cool audiobook and added a bunch of insults and said that I'm a failure and I blew a rooster and my ad agency and blah, 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 and I'm a dumb asshole, shit for brains. <laughs> the next statement is perhaps the most bizarre. Gavin's total lack of self-awareness would seem claim that it's weird because he's talking about a multimillionaire and then also begging for Patreon. Now it doesn't take the colossal mind of Sargon to realise exactly how fucking oblivious that statement is. First of all, Gavin creates content behind a $10 a month paywall. Everything I make, however, is absolutely free. Gavin also has an additional donate button on that exact same subscription website. Everything I make, again, is absolutely free. Gavin also has a second website devoted solely to raising money for a lost cause, currently standing at over $260,000 of other people's money. Once more, everything I make is absolutely free. Sure, I have a Patreon currently standing at little over $200 a month, essentially as a glorified tip jar. That said, I also have a career outside of YouTube and don't really need any sort of financial support from my online activities. I make documentaries mostly because it triggers the sort of ass-blasted reactions like Gavin's, and not because I'm beholden to, let's say, a $10 a month subscriber base. But if you'd still like to discuss money, how about we talk about your time peddling pro-Israeli propaganda under Ezra Levant's payroll? Which is weird too, because he's talking about a multi-millionaire and then also begging for a Patreon, uh, begging for money. And he's also talking about how I'm, I'm desperate for notoriety as he, you know, talks about me for an hour and a half, <laughs> anonymously. He then treads over that exact same tired old ground where boomers bitch moan and complain about anonymity. A more than fitting position, I'm sure you'd agree, for a supposed First Amendment absolutist and founder of something called freespeech.tv. Now I could be wrong, but requesting any random critic with an opinion to unmask themselves for no other reason than personal grievance sure sounds like some top tier free speech to me. It's the anonymous cowardice that's really annoying about these fucking pussies. These losers. He would then fabricate some irrelevant straw man alleging I claimed Gavin only got 10 million, despite me never actually saying that. And regardless of me actually agreeing with Gavin that he should have left Vice given he had nothing left to offer the company in its current format, he still made efforts to complain nonetheless. Now I fundamentally agree with Gavin that if he stayed, Vice would have become a totally different animal entirely, but I'm just not sure why his complaint applies to my documentary. That said, it is of my opinion that maybe retaining a little equity as an inactive investor in the company you founded might have been the smart move. But as Gavin makes pains to remind his subscriber base, unlike him, I am not a multimillionaire. And the, the, what the general theme seems to be that um, I only got 10 million from Vice and those guys are billionaires. I, I don't think people understand that, that Vice wasn't like a stock, 
or it was uh, Bitcoin and I got out too early and then it went up like that. It couldn't have gone up like that without me, w with me there. That's not the model I had. This whole selling out thing where it's like, let's appeal to babysitters and talk about calm milkshakes and gender neutrality and call everyone racist and say how much we hate Trump and all that stuff. Uh, that's not my baby. So it's almost like someone bought your restaurant and then they changed it to a Japanese restaurant and made all this money selling sushi. And you go, ah, you should have stuck around. I'm not a sushi guy. The difficulty is I felt I was more than fair to Gavin and almost definitely pulled punches throughout the documentary. I still feel the relentless censorship and defamation he's had to endure has been wildly unfair at times. I felt I had presented a balanced and neutral perspective, but it appears for Gavin that nothing short of total and utter sycophancy and blind support would have ever been enough. 